Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Fa Southrum. Previously, we entered the third floor of the mansion, where we encountered a few, well, deadly folks. So let's go to this. There are rare treasures inside. Don't listen to them liars. This is a weird place. Not meant for the like of us. No, seriously, this is a weird place. Silver key. Isn't that easy, the fox said. We've been dealing with a fox, haven't we? If you were the only one left. If you were the only one left. Without him. I could become a real little boy. The bunny doll had been tied to the chair of rope. Taking this back. Music shifted, that's not good. Ah. That patch of gray blue was walking towards her. Elizabeth felt hostility. We didn't want to get into a fight. So she hid the doll behind her and wanted to say hello first. But the person seemed a bit strange. Oh no. What are you doing? The melancholic Aras crept closer. Streamster's shears trailed on the ground, cutting open the carpet in air. That's the only thing you can't take. What are you doing? What have you taken? Where are you going? The voice asked lowly. Each scent is accompanied with the smell of rust. Each step traced blood red footprints. You promised me. Those people promised me. Promised to never throw me away. The shrill voice came increasingly closer. Finally stopping in front of Elizabeth. Liar. Let's get caught and see what happens. Of morbid curiosity. Horrible things. Tick tock, tick tock. She woke up on the bed. Tick tock, tick tock. But her body was stiff, like there was numerous hands holding her in place. Oh, this is a bad end. So tired, as if her mind had awoken but her body was still sleeping. Are you ready? There seemed to be someone weighing down her eyelids, not letting them open. You're going shopping with Margaret on the streets today. Are you ready? Have you put on your shoes yet, Elizabeth? She forced her eyes open with pure strength of will upon hearing this. Tick-tock. Tick-tock. A shape the same as hers stood there. Tick-tock. Tick-tock. A voice the same as hers replied. Yes. She desperately tried to make some noise. No. It's me. I'm here. I'm Elizabeth. But no one heard her words. The door closed again, leaving behind the sound of the moving second hand. Tick-tock. Tick-tock. A second followed a second. She watched Elizabeth leave. A second followed a second. She slept deeply again. We've been replaced. Or probably the doll or something now. End one, dearest Elizabeth. Okay, so we're running. You've already gotten your ending and I don't intend to get it again. Oh boy. 
Go south. Go. Oh god, we're gonna be cut off the pass. Hoo wee. Let's stick to the middle. We make it. She ran towards the direction of the road. She ran and ran, ran up countless flights of stairs. I tripped. No. Must stand up. But she couldn't. The shears trailed on the floor. Get away from me, scissor man. Go back to Clock Tower where you belong. If only you weren't here. A strange feeling accompanied this sentence, but she couldn't recall fervor. If only you weren't here. If only you weren't here. If only you weren't here. The sentence kept repeating shrilly. Elizabeth backed up against the wall away, starting to tremble underneath the sharp gaze. And so she started to think, if only you were the one left. If only you weren't here. If only you weren't here. If only you weren't here. Oh. Stairs. It's a lot of flights. Eh? Huh? Alright, you tried to murder me, but are you okay? Grey blue clothing. Large pair of seamstress scissors. Taking that. There's only a piece of wood left now. There was still a piece of wood. The Adventure of Pinocchio, the end. Hmm. Elizabeth had discovered something. She had discovered something. There was a layer of dust over the mirror, and the demon's face reflected out of the corner. Wow, that was close. It almost stabbed you. No. She looked at the dusty mirror and thought, no. She used her sleeve to forcefully wipe at the mirror. The demon reached out to stop her, but she flung its hand away and cleared up the patch that could fit her own reflection. Weird. What's wrong? Weird. What is there to be weird? The demon's laughter wavered. She looked at the mirror and the many things that she couldn't seem to recall suddenly floated into her mind. Her mind started clamoring, and the floor beneath her feet started swaying. It was a bit like the dizziness that had occurred before waking up. Why? She calmed herself with monumental effort, and asked in a quavering voice, Why? Why do you call me Elizabeth? She had noticed. What? What silliness are you spouting? You must be tired. The sickly sweet voice said next to her ear, but she was unable to remain calm now. She looked at her hands and realized that she started clutching the red crayon at some unknown time. It gave her a fright and she quickly threw it away, but the red remaining on her hands wouldn't go away no matter how much she dusted off her hands. She couldn't even wipe her hands clean on her dress, even if... What's the matter, Elizabeth? She said, Don't call me that. But you're Elizabeth. I'm not. Calm down, Elizabeth. I'm not. Wake up. Leave in dreams what shouldn't be, brought to reality. Wake up. Leave always dream back in the dreams. She had discovered it. Final chapter. Hmm. 
So we have scissors, some wooden pieces, and what I assume is a key for the music room. There's a crying shadow blocked by the door. Maybe something could give it an upper pass. What do you want, Shadow? A shadow sitting in the rain. Things have gotten surely curious, haven't they? At least there's no mice around. A shadow of only a wooden blanket wrapped around it. Memories. Hmm. So there's a bit of a twist thing happening here, and I'm trying... I'm not sure if it's due to the pacing or some of the translation, but I'm trying to piece it together in my head. Um, we know there's Margaret, there's Elizabeth, and there's a third child in some of the diaries. Whether or not these are actually children, even that's up for debate. Uh... We get a lot of Margaret's backstory, but not so much the others. And... So maybe... Maybe Elizabeth and another child were adopted, and Margaret's like the mother with... a delirium or something? Cat. Maybe it was a coma story? Bit vague. Bit very vague. I'll, I'll start piecing the giver... after I, uh... Get some more puzzle pieces in my head. The shadow is shivering with cold. Maybe it was a way to warm this area up. Something can be burned, needs to be placed inside. So we gotta help the shadows out. That's the new puzzle. What? Go in? Not yet. Oh, well, I mean. Actually, let's go in. Sure, let's go for it. It was locked. There was a wide open eye on top of the keyhole. Stab it out. We need our eye key? Seems that way. It seems like the Pinocchio story was one of the biggest, most important for the lore. Uh, I just need to kind of figure out how everything correlates. It's a little complicated. And by little, I mean a lot. Anyway, let's go into the music room. This is the room that's been locked away from us for a long time. It wasn't locked it, but the door went open. Ooh. Well, I did take a screenshot of that hand puzzle we saw earlier. Whether or not that's something we need. Whoa, boy. Even with the screenshot of the puzzle. I'm still... That's no good. Yeah, I I'm still very confused. I need to think of like what the scissors is used for, and that's gonna basically help us solve these puzzles. Crying shadow. Let's see if this is like human necky. Give it the hat. Yeah, it is. We gotta give the effects back. Per se. I'm sorry I didn't let you go inside and play with everyone. She said to her own shadow. Oh, I have to give up the dainty umbrella. I'm sorry I let you stand in the rain. She said to her own shadow.
We're gonna give someone to this person, or something, rather. This one's cold. Do you... Need a formal dress? Look, now you have pretty ribbons. Congratulations. I'm sorry I didn't properly dress you up then, she said to her own shadow. Yeah, everyone wants to be warmed up. What can we use to warm them up? Inner tube? <laughs> Let's give him the inner tube. Hey, warm up. So this will work for you, right? It's logical. Let's logic go. Have inner tube. Burn the inner tube. They can be burning to be placed inside. Mouse, get out of here. Now it's not the time. Lay down a sufficient amount of paper. Let the furnace... I'm sorry I didn't let you reach out for help then, she said to her own shadow. That's another one down. An empty hook. Let's go to the real beach after waking up from here, she thought. Sitting full down from overhead. Metallic key. We can finally get to the last shadow. Okay. So we unlock this, and I'm assuming... Give you either the doll or the scissors, maybe? Well, here we go. Open up the key. The Lonely Shadow. No, scissors? What is the scissors used for any for? Doll. Give it to her? No. There you go. You're free now. Wait a second. Elizabeth shouted unconsciously. They left the doll behind. This is new. Elizabeth. Darkness oozed out. Where are you going? There was a light all around. That patch of darkness was so deep that the bomb couldn't be seen. Where are you going? It was like a coating of sugar had been completely melted. Where are you going? She had already remembered. About this place. About herself. And she had remembered everything about that thing. Festo, the dream didn't wish to end, and it asked in a sharp voice, Where are you going? Let's try to get caught, see if there's an ending tied to this. Usually there always is. Another cup of tea, a voice seemed to ask. She was sitting, but also seemed to be lying down. Her eyes were open, but also seemed to be closed. She saw clearly, yet not so very clearly. Or, some more sugar. 
a voice seemed to ask. A full cup of white sugar was then poured, with a swishing sound into a cup already filled with sugar cubes. Someone has a sweet tooth. Want to sleep a bit longer? A voice seemed to ask. Might as well, Elizabeth thought. After all, waking up will occur after sleeping, and sleeping will still happen after waking up. Ah, what a quiet place. I wish this moment would never end. She didn't remember closing her eyes, but it seemed that they had never been open. A darkness that offered peace of mind covered the world, leading her into dreams. Ending 2, Continuation of the Dream This time, we're gonna try not to get caught. I'm gonna skip this dialogue real quick. And I'm gonna start holding the left arrow key. Non stop. So long. Farewell. Off we design. Oh boy. I remember these hallways. Ooh, you're getting close. Oh, here we go. The music begins. Don't play the little wolf song. Oh wow. The doors. Don't stop. This is all around us. Gotta go, gotta go. A door. But the door that had been warped into bizarre shapes wouldn't budge no matter how she pushed. If us the darkness caught up to her. It's only, I mean, I kind of had a suspicion, but you're basically the doll we carried. The reason you came chasing after us is that we left you behind. Where are you going? Why are you leaving? What's bad about this place? It squeezed out the sounds through a grimace. Bad things are only stories here. Bad things all come with a reason here. Bad things are all someone's fault here. The cotton flew haphazardly. The ceiling was screaming. The air was crumpled into a ball. The house seemed like it would collapse any second. But none of this affected it. What's wrong? Why? Don't you like it? Then we can change into an appearance you like. It said, I can make myself into an appearance you like, whether new or old, whether man or woman, whether a good person or bad person. Only I will help you. Only I will talk to you. Only I am your friend. Only I will call you Elizabeth. The ashen-colored face moved vigorously to the point of cracks appearing. Therefore, it doesn't matter that there's no one else. You're the one who's lost. Fast. She wanted to escape but couldn't move a muscle. There was absolutely nothing on her anymore, no matter how her trembling hands fumbled. Ah, there was something. Scissors. You can leave. You can leave alone. You can't. The world shut its mouth for a second. As if finally wanting to become still and listen to her speak. So she let go of her hands and said the next to the thing's ears. Thank you. But I can wake up now. Wake up. Wake up.
Did you fall asleep? My gosh, I only wondered for how long, and you actually fall asleep in these surroundings. You'll catch a cold. Hurry and get up. We're heading back. What a waste of time. You won't believe how run down this house is. Small as heck and nothing inside. No wonder no one wants to come back. Hmm? What's wrong? What? You forgot what? What item? Father gave it to you. When did this happen? Before. It must have broken a long time ago. What do you want of that? I'm not going back again. Forget it. Let's talk about some other day, then. Elizabeth is already waiting. We need to go back. We still have to live together from now on, so the two of you shouldn't argue from day to night. Let's hurry and go. I feel like I'm not any closer to understanding the story. That's pretty rare for me. So we're definitely not Elizabeth. We can confirm that much just from his ending. Now, Faust, dream deeply, till we meet. 
True Ending, Foster's Daydream. So there's one thing left to do, and to solve this puzzle. So I gotta link that together with the thing we saw earlier. I wonder if there's some correlation. F. G. H. K. L. So, I think these keys... are important. Um, there's also... this one right here has a color on it. So if I can kind of make some correlation about what these are with the clues I have, I might be able to solve this. Let's see, 4th of September, that child starts randomly drawing all over the walls. We just have nothing to do or is left untended in the room. I could only follow behind her to the best of my ability. I told her that it was fine if we drew only on paper, so we drew a huge stack of paper. I finished reading the fairy tale to her, and also told her my stories and those of everyone around us. She drew a lot of pictures. I organized them into an illustration book. She doesn't like to talk as much. She's not as bad child. If we all can't enter Margaret's room, then let me stay outside and play with her. Margaret smiles joyfully. I'm never sure if this is a good thing for her. It's as if she's forgotten all the distasteful issues concerning the outside world, even her family and herself. She now lives with that person and the child. I'm happy as long as she's happy, so it's not a feeling of loneliness, or ever a sense of unease. Where had it gone wrong? She stopped playing the piano recently, so I let that child into the piano room. Although unfamiliar, she still had a wonderful time. Should I pick up the piano as well? It's after just September. I want to discuss Margaret's illness with that person. But Margaret noticed. I didn't want her to worry, so I pretend that nothing was going on. Where had it gone wrong? A child said she could already play a complete tune, so she dragged me to listen. It would be great if she could practice it well. P.S. If you're snooping for this diary again, please remember to put it back on my shelf. Here. There was a lot of chocolates next to it, like a reward. The candy wrapper was a page torn from a diary. It's the 27th of September, they argued over a doll. Elizabeth was injured when she fell. We were forced to stop this game of playing house. There was something between the book's pages. A wooden piece. Alright, let's go down to the kitchen. Everything must add up to 15. So 2, 7, 9, 6 goes here. And the 4, so 8, 3, 15. And a 5. A piece of paper had fallen out from behind the puzzle. Sheep music. A piece of paper with a musical score on it. Now we might be able to solve that damn piano puzzle. Colors. I think that was an actual piece of sheep music. Where if I guess where the colors go on the, the thing and I know my notes, I can actually solve it. Like, they gave us a legitimate song we could play.
Door on the side open. Red flower. 28th of September. It seems I really can't continue this way. I thought she was dreaming, but the one hiding a beautiful dream was me. It was I who didn't dare face a suffering Margaret. I was too afraid to shoulder the responsibility, and thus chose the easiest method. But this shouldn't have been the way. My responsibilities were supposed to be helping her return to the real world, and not lead the way in escaping reality. To think that I've spent so long to recall such a simple matter. It's time to end this. I should go wake up and leave this place. It's been a long time since I've entered her room, but let's go in still. I should bring flowers. Wake up. Leave in dreams which shouldn't be brought to reality. The Symbolic Cat! Where are you going, kitty? Meowster! Save point. Come back, Mr. Meowsters. Damn it, you are fast. This was the final room that's been locked. The only one we've never been able to go into. She opened the door with a familiar voice. Look, what do you think of this ribbon? It's cute, right? Let's bring it with us when we go out next time. Daddy said he'll take us to the beach. That was Margaret. She just knew that it was Margaret. The flowers and the shrubs have all bloomed today. Let's go out for a picnic later. No, can't go outside the wall. We'll be fine just staying here. That's right. This is just a dream she fought. Only in dreams will someone help her. Only in dreams will someone talk to her. Only in dreams will she have friends. Only in dreams will she see Margaret. Oh, oh, it's so warm today. I wish this moment would never end. Elizabeth? She had fought several times, so it would be nice to just stay like this and not wake up. But indeed, this could never be. Nothing could progress without waking up. I'm sorry, even though I'm not Elizabeth. She said as a force swayed to her every uttered sound. She said, Even though I have no way to make all of you like me, although a lot of bad things have happened, but I still wish to return to a world in which all this exists. She said, I can wake up already. Let me wake you too. Please wake up and look carefully. Everyone knew that whom he was looking at. That person, he was... Who are you? What are you doing here? What have you done with Elizabeth? The sun on her face and the outside window had all disappeared. What are you saying? Why should I leave with you? What have you said to that person? Margaret's features were a blurry mess. She dragged her stick, thin body heavily forwards with slow, plodding steps accompanied by a cloud of darkness. It's you. It's you. It's you that have caused us to be like this. You always superstitiously talked about me with that person. You're always off on the side saying bad things about me to that person. That person only listens to you. He does anything you ask him to. She had finally figured out that Margaret wasn't talking to herself. Where had it gone wrong? Don't you know? That person won't look at me as long as you're here. Why? Why? Why you? Why is her you? That familiar phrase made its way into her ears. If only you weren't here. 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 If you only weren't here. If only you weren't here. If only you weren't here. Flower petals in the cat's corpse. Where had it gone wrong? I could still seem to hear the adults say that. 
The one that's wandering through the garden earlier, they had the suit, that's probably Siebel in human form. Chocolate. These are all ones you've already read. You can tell because it defaults to no. Broken and gone. She had discovered it. She had discovered it. She had discovered it. This is new. But surprisingly, a lot of the people realized that the prince wasn't looking at her. Puss in the boots. The end. So we have a new option, so let's take that. Choose you to ignore the shadow. Elizabeth. I think this is the same dialogue so far, so I'll skip to this until I see something new. Yeah, same dialogue. So let's start running. There's a noose in the person back there. That's new. Keep moving, keep moving. Ooh, boy. There can never be any hesitation in your movements at this part. I tripped. Oh, no. Must run quickly. Must run quickly. Must run click quickly. But she lifted her head to find that the world was an expanse of black. No matches, no light, no people. The darkness was so uncompromisingly thick and opaque that it was like it would swallow someone whole. Where was the door? To the front? In the back? She started losing track of direction and fell to a sitting position on the ground. The blackness starts slowly eating away at her. So tired. Really want to sleep. Really? Come this way. Come back to the door. That was Siebel, the little cat bell ring. Pardon me. Oh, are you awake? Sorry, but you'll catch a cold if you fall asleep here. Do you live nearby? Is that so? I haven't come back here for many years as well. Sorry, nothing much. Just that I've heard that this house will be cleaned up. Ah, oh, my apologies. Hello. I was a nurse who used to work here. Just that... I think there was a piano in the house. I hope the new owner can avoid throwing it away. It's not worth a lot, and it's quite old. It may have been left there for a long time without a tune-up. It's nothing important. Hmm, no, I don't play. It's just that before... Hmm? What? Uh. It was a long time ago. I don't remember much of it. Where to begin?
Hidden Ending, Song of Flowers. Faust. The name Faust hails from an ancient German legend. It said that he possessed profound knowledge but was dissatisfied of his life. Therefore, he made a deal with the demon to trade his soul for worldly pleasures, and was reborn when he was turned from an aged professor back into a young man. The Faust that belongs to this dreamscape is a young girl with a withdrawn character. She falls asleep in dreams after revisiting old haunts, mixing the realities of the past with her own wishes and desires. She recovers from the demon a name that doesn't belong to her, and participates in a bet, vowing that she wouldn't linger in the embrace of comfort. She swears that she won't profess you're so wonderful, please wait a moment, to any second she experiences in a period of time that shouldn't have been repeated. Mephistopheles in Goff's Foss, the demon Mephistopheles declares to God that he can tempt and deceive the soul of his most loyal servant, Faust. Therefore, as materialized on earth and helped the aged Professor Foss return to the glorious days of youth, reliving Faust's life anew of him. And in this dream, as a young girl's only friend, it follows a girl in re-examining the memories of the past. He knows everything about her, brings her what she wants, and calls her by the name she yearns for. He does everything he can to keep her here. As for whether it's a demon, an illusion, and a dream, the little girl's discarded doll or a nightmare, we have no way of knowing. Siebel. In Gorat's Foss theme opera, the character of Siebel is usually portrayed by a cross dressing mezzo soprano. Siebel is infatuated with love for Margaret and isn't afraid even when the character feels the demon's aura. Siebel brings fresh flowers and sings moving songs of love beneath her window. The character's songs are not heard. The Siebel that belongs to this dreamscape is in charge of taking care of Margaret's day-to-day -day living. Even though Siebel pours out heart and soul, the character is still subjected to Margaret's misunderstanding. As someone who is in a similar straits to the girl, Siebel appears as the image of a black cat seemingly wearing a tuxedo in the young girl's dreams. Just as how they used to interact, Siebel helps her from behind the scenes from time to time. Homunculus. Homunculus indicates a man-made being created for using alchemy. In Goeth's Foss, it's Foss's student Wagner who creates the homunculus. To the young girl, she and her twin were like that thing. In fact, the other twin, the Elizabeth beloved by everyone, is a person that she admires and longs for but cannot become. But in this dream, in accordance with her swishes, that person became the melancholy, gloomy, frightening projection of her own image. The moment when she pushed this self-satisfying illusion down the stairs was when she finally saw clearly who this person was and who she was. Valentin In Belazza's Del Damnation de Faust, Margaret po poisons her own mother in order to have an illicit liaison with Faust. In most versions, Valentin is a soldier who, upon learning of his sister's infidelity, rages and demands a deal with Faust. He dies under Foss's sword as the latter benefits from the protection of the demon. And insane Margaret, locked in jail, kills the baby that she had out of wedlock. Valentin dies a vengeful death as he bitterly curses his own sister that even if the heavens pardon her, she will never receive forgiveness on earth. In this dream, the family prepares all sorts of treatment methods that are abnormally ineffective for Margaret. She was obviously pregnant with her loved one's child, but found people's super Surreptitious glances unbearable and was tortured by surrounding whispers. She had calmed down once, but the Valentin's visit caused her to be engulfed in fear. She didn't wish to listen to her brother's recommendations and accidentally pushed him off the railing during a fight. Margaret miscarried, and the young man was a fuss internally buried in the young girl's memories. So it makes sense, that's why the balcony. Oh, here's the imps. Porky it in. In Greek mythology, the Porcidon are the three witches, who are also sisters who share an eye and tooth amongst them. They appear in the fantastical second act of Goa's Foss. In this dream, they are children who used to be loved with the young girl. 
They take the various negative memories that she once experienced to create fear and terror within the nightmare. I kind of put that together in my head. So that's it for Foss Alptrum. I went back and kind of read for the diary pages in order, so I can get a good idea of the plot and the ex information from the extra. We can kind of put together someone of went went down. So we have Margaret, who has some issues with memory, uh, almost kind of like a dementia. You have Siebel, who is kind of a s servant, butler, kind of a supportive figure. And that's the Puss in Boots in the story. And then you have Valentinen, who is a brother. And then you have Heinrich, and you have Dr. Wagner. These are all the players of the storyline, as far as I can tell. So Margaret has issues. Uh, the house is a converted old hospital. Uh, Dr. Wagner has some kind of child organ trafficking ring set up in the cellar. While also taking care of Margaret at the same time. And you have Heinrich, who is Margaret's secret lover. At some point in the backstory, she, they impregnated Margaret. Um, and of course, Margaret miscarries later when she has a confrontation with her brother about things, which goes terrible. And uh, Dr. Wagner at some point leaves mysteriously. I wasn't sure if it meant Dr. Wagner died, or maybe Sable even murdered Dr. Wagner and covered it up. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. But um, Siebel obviously was also infatuated with Margaret. Um, hence the Puss, Puss in Boots storyline. And I think there's an implication that Siebel might have done some bad things. Like cleaning up the murders, cleaning up Valentinen's body after he fell off the uh, balcony. Hence why he discards his bracelet. Because it didn't feel clean. Because obviously it probably got blood stained. And uh, it kind of represented some kind of sin. That's another little thing I pieced together of this timeline. And the three demons, as the storyline says, were some of the children that were going to have their organs harvested along with our main character, Faust, and some off-screen character, Elizabeth, who we don't actually see in the uh, game. But our character does have an envy for them, hence the homunculus, which represents their emotions. Uh, there's multiple layers and facets of the storyline, like they all kind of come out at once, and due to the non-linear nature of the game at times, it kind of seems a little bit unsegmented. But if we have to sum it up, child trafficking ring, tragic character who was a mother figure to these orphans that they took in and adopted after this mess was cleaned up, uh, and terrible memories which lead to this person, uh, Foster main character, ending up in this demon's world. The only thing I can't really piece together is who the final figure is in the hidden ending, because uh, it's not Heinrich, because Heinrich is the father that died at the beginning. And it's not Valentin in, because Valentin's dead. So there's only two people it can be, which is either Sable, which I think the storyline implied Sable died also, or it could be uh, Dr. Wagner. But the character says they're a nurse. I don't remember if Sable ever was claiming they were a nurse, but uh, they could have been, or that might be some, why Sable would call themselves. But you would think Sable would recognize our main character pretty handedly, so they don't seem to recognize him. I mean, it could have just been a random generic nurse, also, who had fond memories of the place, but... That's the last one I can't really pin down. That, those are the only two characters I feel like that could have been. And... Unless it's a, a wild card character I haven't, like, realized exists yet. But anyway, that's the plot. Uh, it's a bit piecemeal, vague. Which actually kind of gets to my review of this game, which is... This is kind of a funny game to me. And it's because it jumps between being a good game and a, a, frankly, a kind of very mediocre, bad RPG Maker game. The art's real good. Like, actually, really, really good. I like the style a lot. Uh, the music choices are so-so. They kind of just threw a lot of classical songs in. Some of them work really well, some don't. The storyline is actually perfectly fine, if not good. But the way the storyline is presented at times is kind of dissegmented. And I'm not sure if some of its translation also but some of the dialogue feels a little bit stiff and a lot of it's told in diaries and there's a little bit less show than there is tell. The gameplay itself is typical RPG Maker Fair. You can't really deviate from that too much. It's the nature of the engine. Uh, the early parts, the pacing's a little bit too slow. The pacing picks up towards the end as a cool thing start to happen. Um, but that kind of like gets to my point of where it jumps between being a really standout RPG Maker game and being like mediocre to actually bad. 
But overall, I enjoyed the experience, mainly because of the art and some of the intricacies of the plot. And uh, I actually really enjoyed this for the puzzles. And the pu some of the puzzles are actually pretty damn hard. They're they're actually comparable to kind of very early generation adventure games, uh, which is very rare for video games in general nowadays, especially an RPG Maker game. So some of the puzzles were so hard that they weren't fun. Well, other ones were really hard, but they were still fun. So that's another reason I would give this game some points. And it's a free game, so, you know, you're not losing any money by playing this. So that's my kind of statement about this game. It's it's a good, good, mediocre game. And it hops between it non-stop, like one after the other. Uh, it's just a shame it could just have been a straight good game. Because the potential was there. With the, the great puzzles and the great art and the kind of may somewhat interesting structure, the potential is really there. And it just kind of dropped in a few like very specific parts that really dragged it down. Anyway, so thank you all for watching Play of Fossil's Alptrum. I'll see you guys later and take it easy.